Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and welcome to the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And we just had the US Open. It's done for 2022, and we have some massive changes on the men's and women's rankings. Let's start with the results, though, because, of course, we only had two tournaments, US Open. Let's see the winners. So starting with the women's champion, Iga Sviantek. She took out Ons Jabeur in straight sets, 6-2, 7-6. Staying at number one, she's number one by a mile. And on the men's side, Alcaraz defeated Rude, 6-4, 2-6, 7-6, 6-3. Six, and both of those guys got massive rankings boosts. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings and big changes from last time we did the ranking show. But Sviantek, she stays at number one. Ons Jabeur, she goes up three spots to number two in the world. A equaling career high for her. She was at number two a few months ago. She goes up to number two, pushing Contivate down to number three. And Zachary drops down to number six after not being able to defend the points from last year's semifinal at the US Open. We've got Bedosa at four. Pagula goes up to a career high number five after a good US Open, three spots higher than last week. There's Sakari at number six, like I said, dropped down. Sabalenka goes down one spot despite making the semifinals to number seven. And Coco Goff comes in at number eight, four spots higher than last week. Career high, first top 10 appearance for Goff after making the quarterfinals of the US Open. So Goff goes up into the top 10, pushing Halep down two spots to number nine in the world. Garcia coming in at number 10, seven spots higher after making the semifinals of the US. And we had two players getting pushed out with Kazakina and Muguruza being pushed out of the top 10 completely this week. Having a look at the race of the finals now and Ons Jabeur has officially qualified for the WTA finals in Texas at the end of the season. So that means two places have been locked up. Triontek and Jabeur both playing the WTA finals. Kazakina though has been pushed down after her first round loss down to number seven with a lot of players who did much better than her being pushed up, with Pagula coming in at three, one spot higher than last time. Goff coming in at four, two spots higher than last time. Garcia going up four spots to number five after making the semifinals. Sabalenka also up four spots to number six after making the semifinals. Kazakina at seven. Halep drops three spots to number eight again because she lost in the first round and the players above her did better. So she's at number eight. Zachary at number nine, two spots lower than last week. And Kudamatova comes into the top 10 after making the fourth round of the US Open, two spots higher than last week, which pushes Bedosa out of the top 10 completely. So the race to the finals is starting to heat up. And now with not that many tournaments left, more and more players are going to start qualifying. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week on the WTA, we had Kudamatova. She's gone up five spots, number 13 in the world rankings, which is a career high for her. And Tomanovic, she goes up to a career high 34 in the world, 12 spots higher than last week after making the quarterfinals of the US. So two players did really well this week, going to career high rankings. And players that have dropped down the rankings in the week, the two finalists of last season and last US Open, Fernandez, she's gone down 26 spots to number 40 in the world after losing early in the tournament. And of course, Radu Kanu, she had a lot of points to defend and she lost in the first round. She's gone down 72 spots to number 83 in the world. So the defending finals of last year, unable to replicate what they did in 2021. Let's head over to the ATP rankings now, and there are some massive changes. We've got a new world number one. Carlos Alcaraz, three spots higher than last week. He is the number one in the world after winning the US Open. Casper Ruud, he goes up five spots to number two in the world after making the final. So both those guys were playing for that number one ranking and Alcaraz was the one who got it. Rafa comes in at number three despite making it to the fourth round. He stays at number three. Medvedev's gone down three spots to number four after failing to defend the final of last year or the points of last year. Zverev, he's also gone three spots to number five after not playing and losing all his semi-final spots from last season. Sidipas has gone down to number six. Djokovic has also gone down a spot to number seven after not playing the event, not being allowed in America. And he lost all his finals points from last year's event. Cam Norrie, he's gone up one spot to number eight in the world, which is a career high for him, with Rublev getting back into the top 10, up two spots to number nine in the world. Her catch at number 10, and Felix ogier is out of the top 10 completely after losing all of his semi-final points from last season, unable to save those points. So a massive change to the top 10, especially up the top there with the new world number one. And Elkrez is 900 points ahead of Rude, so he might be able to stay at number one for a couple of months yet. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and four players are now locked in for the ATB finals. We have Alcaraz, he goes up two spots higher and overtakes Rafa, knocking him off top spot for the first time this year, who goes down to number two, with Rude going up into number three spot after making the final, pushing Sidney Pass down two spots to number four. But those four players are the only ones qualified 
for now. Medvedev, he comes in at number five with Rublev leapfrogging a couple of players to get to number six after making the quarterfinals, pushing Ojeli Asim down to number seven and Zverev down to number eight. So with only four spots up for grabs, and remember Djokovic also possibly able to qualify if he stays in the top 20. There's only really three spots up for grabs for the remainder of the season. Her catch at number nine and Fritz stays at number 10 for this week. So the ATP finals are really starting to take shape. Half the spots have been locked in. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings over the last couple of weeks outside of the top 10, Hashinov, he made the semifinals. He goes up to number 18 in the world, 13 spots higher than last week. And Tiafo, after making the semifinals and beating Rafa along the way, he's gone up seven spots to number 19 in the world, which is a career high for him, top 20 for the first time in his career. So the semifinals of this tournament boosting the rankings for them. Players that have gone down in the rankings this week, two of the quarterfinals of last year, Van Zanschup, He's gone down 13 spots to number 35 in the world. And Harris, he's gone down 75 spots to 140 in the world after not playing the US Open due to injury and losing all his quarterfinals points. So the players that did well last year, losing all their points this year, and the players that did well this year, going up the ranks. So there you have it. The US Open done and dusted, and the rankings have changed dramatically. We've got a new world number one. We've got some changes on the women's. It's crazy. Let me know down in the comments below. What is the craziest part of the rankings for you? Is it Elkris being one? Is it Rude being two? Is it the fact that Djokovic is not out of the top 10 despite not playing most of this season? Let me know down in the comments below. What is the craziest thing out of the rankings from this week and after the US Open? 